Hi, I'm Anita of my Juganite podcast and um, I just had my phone, I was looking at it and I saw, um, you know, that they've decided to take the, um, you know, the life support of Anne Hitch and um, it's sad because that girl, I remember her on um, one of the soap operas she came into Hollywood and she had so much talent and um, but she had a lot of demons and it got the best of her and regardless of whatever her troubles were at the end of the day she's still a human being and it's sad when somebody who had so much talent, somebody that was so promising, just um, disintegrates like that. It's no matter who you are, you it, it, it affects you. And that's how I feel right now. Anyways, as mm, I don't even know how to move on from that, but yeah oh look at my makeup <laughs> i was looking at one of those youtube tutorial and um you know sometimes you look at them and uh whatever they do it's just perfect and then when you try it on yourself it's like <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> So that's how I feel right now. I feel like, oh geez, I hope I'm not coming across the screen as a clown because this is a lot of colors <laughs> here. But um, anyways, it is what it is, right? <laughs> Remember I told you guys to stay tuned because we haven't heard from Megan nor Serena about um, their friendship. Well, Serena has spoken. It was in one of the um, Vogue video interviews. So she was looking at her um, past outfits that she wore. And she, uh, she came across the one that she wore for the royal wedding. So she was describing what it was like and her preparation and what have you. And in that um, seg segment, she said, she referred to Megan as her dear friend. So, um, Lion Tom Bauer, or Bowels, or whatever his name is, you know, that man has no chin, and I think he's miserable. He's not a good looking man. He's probably <laughs> been rejected all his life. And a way to make up or co uh, compensate for all his years of rejection is to write terrible things about people and that's how he gets his satisfaction sad but um it was just really cool to see how serena just tell it like it is and i also came across another interview with serena and um it was after Oprah did um, her interview with Megan and Serena came to Megan's defense and we can take a listen to it. Okay, let's listen. Megan Markle, who I know is a dear friend of yours as well. Um, and, you know, talking about having the courage and the strength and, and changing the narrative and how important that is. Um, I'm just curious, why was it important for you to make that statement? Um, Megan is a great person, and I think the epitome of strength, the epitome of confidence, the epitome of um, just selflessness, and the epitome of everything is just her and everything that she's gone through. And I know it's not easy, and you could see from the interview that it wasn't easy, but she had so much poise, and she still had so much... Um, she just so much class you know i just i just think that she is really one of the strongest person i know i don't know anyone else that could handle everything on such a global scale the way that she's had to handle things that are just untrue 
minute after minute, not even day after day, but just minute after minute, just another untrue allegation being thrown at her. So um, I think it was important for me to say something because I'm tired of sitting back and seeing, you know, all this negativity. That's just not true. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it truly is. I mean, she her strength and courage is such an inspiration. Um, and I think the importance of, as you said, you know, women supporting women and standing by each other is, is also quite important. So I, I really appreciated your statement um, and, and also just the friendship that you both share. Well, Serena is a true friend. <laughs> and um, after listening to this, um, this is definitely friendship goals. And um, I'm telling you, go out there and find yourself a good friend like Serena Williams. <laughs> we all know here in the United States, right, that service is universal. Unfortunately, in Great Britain, they do not think that way, particularly the royal family. And that's the reason why they're missing out on Prince Harry and Princess Meghan. And I say that to say because um princess megan and prince harry's um actual foundation received an award from a non-for-profit organization called human first collision and this organization what they do is provide um humanitarian aid for the people of afghanistan and the reason why that organization came to be is because when the u.s military pulled out of Afghanistan um, it upended the lives of many people because the government that they had there was overthrown by the Taliban, Taliban government so the people were in dire need of help and um, that organization um, relocated a lot of families from Afghanistan throughout the world and so they're doing a lot of good work and um, Harry and Meghan donated to them and as a result they're reciprocating their kindness and um, on the 15th of August they're gonna have a ceremony um, the award ceremony here in New York and um, though Harry and Meghan are not going to be here to receive in New York to receive the award they're gonna send a uh, uh, representative from the actual foundation and I think the person's name is their last name is Holt I don't have my phone on me because I don't have yes the person's last name is Holt so that person is going to step in and re and um, accept the award on um, Archwell's behalf and I think the person is the executive director of the actual foundation I think um, I always <laughs> I don't have a script and I'm doing all of this from my head so that's the reason why I'm always trying to um, remember but anyways it's wonderful and um, it just shows that you don't have to be in England for you to be able to do good um, look they're here and they're doing good all the way <laughs> in Afghanistan. So that is just really awesome. I read an article from Omid today and it was really mind blowing. The article was basically telling the UK government to provide security for Harry before it's too late. And what was interesting about the article is that Prince Andrew, you know, who no longer does work for the royal family or, he, you know, he's been stripped of his patronages, is getting a, from the UK government, from its taxpayers, $500,000 a year to protect him. You know, when you think about that, it is so vile. Here you have a man that has been accused of raping a child and to get funding to protect him by the people of England it, it is just mind-boggling how do you protect a person like that that have committed such or allegedly committed such an act 
it's just it, it, it's it I'm baffled by it but anyway that's England for you okay and um, so they just have to step up and um, hopefully when we have that e hearing um, for um, to revisit Harry's security by the um, the Homeland um, Office is that they give him the proper protection that he needs because God knows Harry and his family they are constantly being threatened by you know those extremists and racist groups out there you know simply because you know he's a prince one and two it's obvious that he married to a black woman so I hope they do the right thing and the next thing is can people stop associating Prince Harry and Princess Meghan with everything that is happening in California. There's a wild lion on the loose in Montecito and the, to report about it, the first thing that they do is, well, Harry and Meghan lives in uh, Montecito, so we can associate them with that, um, you know, with that report. Um, what about all the John, Mary, David that is living in the area? You know, I'm sure there are hundreds and thousands of people who lives out in that area. Why don't you write about those people that live there and the lion that is in, in the in vicinity? Okay, stop using Harry and Meghan as your meal ticket. Stop using them to sell your magazines and your articles and your advertisement bye guys